It's so quiet. A bunch of kids. <laughs> Let, let the record reflect. We have reconvened with all members present. Please rise for Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing after the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing. A moment of silence in honor and memory of Governor Brendan Byrne. Governor Byrne's accomplishments are numerous, preserving the pine lands, creating funding stream, aka income tax, to provide equal education to all, development of the meadowlands, and revitalization of Atlantic City through casino gambling were just a few of his accomplishments. But I think in today's political world, which is really uh, special about Governor, uh, Governor Byrne was the relationship he had with Tom Kane, eventually, uh, who followed him as governor, that uh, initially became challengers on the tennis court, but they looked at each other to challenge each other's uh, stance on various things, and both came out stronger for the relationship they had. And that goes a long ways and uh, should be an example to all that ele elected officials that serve today. So a moment of silence for Governor Byrne, but also a moment of silence for Patricia Godlewski, former uh, Court Administrator for the Borough of Madison and also wife of former Madison firefighter Stan Galuski. Thank you. May I have a motion for the executive minutes of November 27th and December 11th, 2017. So moved. moved. Second. Already discussed in executive. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And a regular a motion for the regular minutes of November 27th, 2017. So, so moved. moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Nelson Jimenez, please come forward. Chief, family, Jimenez family, please come on up. This is a great way to start the new year by swearing in and giving the oath of office to our newest police officer. Nelson represents the 155th police officer for the Borough of Madison since 1890, and he will be assigned to the patrol division after completing 12-week field training. Just a little background before we go through the formal part, so you can relax just a second. <laughs> <laughs> Born in the Dominican Republic, Nelson came to this country when he was one year old. Family settled in Wharton, where N Nelson was raised, at, and you graduated from Morris Hills High School in 2010 making me feel old, <laughs> that's all right. And uh, got your degree from uh, Montclair State in 2014 in, in Justice Studies. Your law, uh, Nelson's law enforcement career began as alternate route recruit in Morris County's 89th basic police class. At graduation, Nelson was presented the Morris County's 200 Club Award, which is presented to the single recruit whose outstanding efforts and attitude best exemplify the training goals of Morris County Police Academy and certainly represent what we'd like to see here in Madison. Nelson's uncle Troy has served the past 25 years with the Patterson, New, New Jersey uh, Police Department. And standing next to uh, Nelson is his fiance Tiffany, so welcome. And the one thing I have said I will not hold against Nelson, you know, the one thing that really jumped out on the sheet of paper is that he's a Mets fan. But uh, that's okay. <laughs> okay, want to. Yes, that's right. <laughs> we do thorough background checks. Please raise your right hand, left hand on the Bible. 
and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Nelson Jimenez. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will faithfully. That I will faithfully. Impartially. Impartially. And justly. And justly. Perform all the duties of. Perform all the duties of. Police officer for the borough of Madison. Police officer for the borough of Madison. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. I further solemnly swear. I further solemnly swear. I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. And that I will bear true faith and allegiance. To the same. To the same. And to the governments. And to the governments. Established in the United States. Established in the United States. And in this state. And in this state. Under the authority of the people. Under the authority of the people. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations and welcome aboard. Tiffany, can I go ahead, Tiffany? and say it's some, sometimes being mayor is uh, causes me to take Excedrin and then moments like this is an honor to be mayor to swear in some great officer. Welcome all to a new year, our first real meeting after a reorganization meeting, uh, not that that's fake, but this is now we really get to work right now. Welcoming Pat Rowe as our president, sitting in the first seat right there, and John Hoover, welcome to the big table. Thank you. <laughs> and Carmel, once again, welcome for yet another round. <laughs> a, few, <laughs> a few comments uh, before we move on. Uh, one, obviously, it's been a uh, tough stretch weather-wise that uh, we've had a, uh, in the last two weeks, a winter we haven't seen for quite a while. I want to thank DPW for the great cleanup effort, and also a big thanks to our crossing guards who have been out there in that bitter cold keeping our children safe. So uh, as you uh, see the crossing guards, thank them for their great effort. An example of uh, a great thing about Madison is I, I had the opportunity to stop by the reupholstery and restoration store on Central Avenue. Uh, in the old ra railroad depot there. And um, Johnny, who is, uh, runs the store, was recognizing his um, staff. Some have been with him for five and ten years, so had uh, plaques to present to him and wanted to invite friends and customers to enjoy lunch and recognize the staff. Thank you, uh, Madison Police, for coming and joining us tonight. It was great to uh, have the support. And it was just, Johnny talked so much about how he has been in many places and how much Madison has been a great town to be in and how he feels part of a larger family. And he was also very proud to share with me that his great spread of uh, food represented five businesses in Madison as he made sure he spread the wealth in picking various places to get the food from. And last week at the reorganization meeting, I talked about the need to go out and just find Madison residents and share your story and get their story. But uh, Johnny, who has been um, in the upholstery business there for I don't know how many years, Jim probably, ten, yeah, eight, eight years or so, but he's, he was also a long time instructor at the uh, adult school teaching others how to uh, do their own upholstery. 
But I learned at this lunch that he was a professional boxer at one point, f fighting at the old Madison Square Garden, and was known for one quickest hands in the ring. So, you know, stop by and say hello to Johnny, congratulate him on uh, his years in Madison, and thank him for recognizing his staff and listen to his story. It's a great one. Employees for the month of January: Jim Trimble and Bonnie Mulcahy of the. Electric utility for implementing new handheld devices, including field testing, as well as working with the software developers. And a lot of those words would make people shake that have worked with implementing new software and new tools. And so their patience and extra effort to make that happen is incredibly appreciated. Um, in addition, Jim and Bonnie are recognizing for their help and cooperation with the KRE development and with uh, completing reads in a timely fashion during all kinds of weather as the development of the road, at the Green Village Road School property comes online. And a uh, anniversary for January, Diane Frieda of the Madison Public Library, 35 years on January 31st. All right, reports from committees. Health, Mr. Rowe. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, flu shots are still available from the health department. Residents needing a shot should call and schedule an appointment. Second, mm -hmm. all dog and cat license renewals are due by the end of this month, January 31st, as are all retail food establishment licenses. Thank you very much. Thank you. Public Works and Engineering, Ms. Vitale. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I want to start off um, uh, my comments tonight. Um, with congratulations to uh, Department of Public Works. They did a great job last Thursday. Um, and they're out there already. Thank At 6 o'clock when we were coming in, they were out salting again. So, um, you know, things have been going very, very well. Um, Ken uh, O'Brien wants everybody to know that we've gotten lots and lots of good accolades on the ice pond uh, maintenance. And thanks to the Parks Department, they've been working very hard. Um, there's a great video on Facebook. If you haven't seen it, take a look at it. And everybody's been enjoying, the kids are enjoying this cold weather because they can get out and they can uh, ice skate. Um, so the Parks Department, uh, the mechanics, the roads, and the sewer department, uh, they were picking up leaves as long as they possibly could. Uh, we had snow on some of them, but they came out and they uh, got rid of all of them way beyond uh, the, the time that we said that they would be stopping. They just got all the leaves away. Um, so uh, they, they started on the ice pond setup and the maintenance and, of course, the snow removal and the salting, which has been ongoing. Um, and what happens is, is that the mechanics always have to have problems because all of these um, snow plows and whatever and vehicles are out, so they've been very busy as well. Um, they've all chipped in with the um, snow removal and salting, the parks, the roads, and the sewer department. So they've done a great job, and uh, we're very thrilled that people are actually able to use the ice rink this year. So from engineering, uh, there was an informal public meeting tonight um, for the review of the 2018 road improvement projects, will, which will include Crestwood, Rosewood, Kensington Plain Central, uh, which is a sidewalk, and Greenwood. These projects anticipate advertisements in February, contractor awards in May, and construction over the summer. Uh, the general contractor, Joe Med Construction, be began saw cutting the road for Central Avenue, water main replacement, and will continue that work this month, weather permitting. It, uh, as Bob uh, mentioned at the uh, meeting today, it looks kind of terrible, but in the end, it's going to look really great, and it's, um, we're going to have um, good, uh, a good replacement there. Uh, Pleasant Run Homestead Structures worked through the cold between Christmas and New Year's to get the Memorial Park uh, Ring Storage Building assembled on site. The final completion of the awning stores and windows is anticipated over the next two weeks. So it's going to be a great little place to visit uh, when all of that is done. I wanted to mention this from the construction office. Valerie Walters, 
um, who is one of our technical assistants in the construction office, was advised that she can, uh, she has received her teaching certification from the Department of Community Affairs to teach employees in building departments to receive their certification as technical assistants to the construction code official. The classes are held at various colleges in the spring and fall semester. So uh, congratulations to Valerie for making that one step further in her career. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Finance the borough clerk, Ms. Bailey. Oh, thank you, Mayor. From the clerk's office, uh, in anticipation of the June 5th primary election, I can't believe we're talking about an election so soon, uh, <laughs> the filing deadline for nomination petitions for municipal office is April 2nd, 2018, and the forms are available in the clerk's office. Voter registration forms as well as mail-in ballot applications are also available in the clerk's office or online at morriselections.org. From the finance department, um, from the tax collector's office, mm -hmm. the tax collector's office has been extremely busy um, this month of December with many residents choosing to prepay their 2018 prop property taxes before the year end. Over eight Point five million dollars in prepaid taxes was collected in the month of December, with eight point one million being collected in the last two weeks of the month. And the staff really did a great job managing the traffic. Um, yeah, I actually witnessed that firsthand. From the utility billing department, we are pleased to announce that the new utility bill, which is right here, has been a form is being used, and they started they started mailing them earlier this week. The form includes uh, 13 months of historical consumption as well as the rate schedule and how the bill is calculated. This process took six months to develop, so we really want to thank the members of the Utility, utility Advisory Committee for their help in designing the bill, and we'd like to thank the Utility Collection Supervisor, Donna Carey, for her help with this important project. And tonight, the Council will discuss the upcoming budget schedule. The budget must be introduced by March 26th so that the borough remains in compliance with state law. And we have five scheduled dates, and residents are encouraged to come and learn more about the borough's finances. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Public safety, Mr. Wolkowitz. Thank you, Mayor. Beginning with the police department. As I uh, hope you're aware, December is the month in which our police department, along with the Madison PBA number 92, participate in the annual Toys for Tots program. They do this in conjunction with the United States Marines. This year, thanks to the generosity of our residents, 2,700 toys were collected, which were distributed to families who couldn't otherwise afford to have toys. Uh, and you should know that uh, for, since the beginning of this program, approximately 20,000 toys have been collected. So it's, uh, it's quite a successful program, and it's a testimony to our residents. On December 29th, uh, one of our patrolmen, Travis, Travis Daniel, participated in New Jersey State PBA versus the New Jersey State Police hockey game at the Menin Arena better known as cops versus troopers. <laughs> and uh, Patrolman Daniel was uh, a very important part of the victory. He had three assists. The cops won five to four. Ooh. The Madison, um, um, you should, let me just back up for a second. Um, I'd like to make you aware of the fact that there was a, a robbery at a local uh, supermarket on, this, on January 5th. <laughs> Through the um, terrific police work of our own department, along with Chatham Borough, three people were apprehended for that crime. The message here is when you park your car in Madison, as safe as we all feel in this town, it's a good idea to lock it. And if you do have to leave some valuables in your car, please then Please leave them in an inconspicuous place so they can't be seen by someone looking in. Um, I, as well, the police department, along with the PDA, purchased a 16-foot trailer. I think that was in part motivated by the 2,700 toys. And they're going to use it for subsequent toy drives, food drives, Bottle Hill Day, and any other police-related activities that require such a, such a vehicle. 
Uh, as for the fire department, they reported on their activity for 2017, they had 1,353 calls. So I guess, I guess they don't play checkers all day, right? It sounds like they've been pretty busy. They had 774 fire-related incidents and 579 EMS calls. As you might expect with this recent cold weather, they're off to a fast start. For the eight days of January, the fire department responded to 44 calls, 30 fire-related incidents, and 14 EMS calls. Thank you. Thank you. Community Affairs, Ms. Byrne. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, from the Director of Business Development, planning for 2018 is underway. A document laying out potential projects and initiatives has been created and is currently under internal review. A letter of introduction, which includes a general overview, will be sent to landlords and business owners this week. From the Downtown Development Commission, the 2018 Taste of Madison will be held on Monday, March 19th. Whip out your calendars at Brook Lake Country Club. Planning is underway and sponsorship letters have been sent. Tickets will be available for purchase shortly. Please plan to attend the Signature Madison event. The DDC will hold its annual reorganization meeting on Thursday, January 18th at 7.15. The election of officers will take place at this meeting. And finally, initial work on the new community magazine with Town Square Publications has begun. The magazine is due to be released in early summer. From the Chamber of Commerce, the 2018 Home Expo will once again be held in the spring at the Madison Junior School. The tentative date is April 28th. They are waiting for confirmation of the venue. Loyalty rewards cards are available. The new loyalty reward card has been printed and is for sale at the Madison Pharmacy. Colwell Banker sponsored the program. 26 businesses appear on the card and it has been heavily advertised. These cards are worth it if you get your car washed because you get 10% off getting your car washed. So five car washes and you've paid off the car. A new <laughs> printed, just had to put that there. there. <laughs> A new printed Madison map program will roll out at the end of January. And finally, Mrs. Vitale, children are not the only ones who use that ice skating rink. <laughs> I have ice skates, and despite my knees, I was out there skating in the cold, and I was loving the fact that in previous years, to get snow off the, the rink, you had to shovel it yourself. And so the rink was no longer a big open rink. It became smaller rinks where people had shoveled the snow off. But DPW came, it was like a Zamboni had gone through. We have there, a Zamboni. We, do, we have a Zamboni. Yeah, we have it. So it was, a Zamboni yeah, went through. It was, it was, it was awesome and, and good exercise. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. In the utilities, Mr. Hoover. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, anybody that thinks things go slowly in this borough, it doesn't. I was, uh, we had the reorganization meeting last Wednesday, and here I am sitting at the council table giving you a report on water and utilities. Believe me, things move very fast here. On water, <clears throat> water samples were taken per state requirements to test for coliform, E. coli, volatile organic components. The hydrant, I am pleased to report, the hydrant flushing is completed, so you don't have to look for brown water anymore. Uh, 13 meter head or outside registers were installed. Water department reminds all of us to please shut off outside water for, for your faucets, sprinkler and connections, and remove uh, cords, uh, garden hoses from the faucets. Okay, or they'll freeze. There were two calls for no water and two minor water main breaks which were fixed very, very quickly. <clears throat> on the electric department, installation of meters at KRE is complete. <clears throat> the Christmas tree will come down on Tuesday, January 9th. And the primary wire in in installed from the pole to uh, pad mounts on Shun Pike at Meadow Court for, seven, for 13 homes was completed. And they installed a, a heater at Well E. 
Okay, thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Communications and petitions. None received, Mayor. All right, this is the first of two invitations for discussion from the public. This one is limited to the items on the agenda discussion and also resolutions. I will do a quick overview of those resolutions in just a few seconds. Uh, so you may come up and comment on any of these topics. Keep your comments to three minutes or less. I will give you a warning at three minutes and allow you to go to four minutes and then we will cut you off at that point. Um, the items we are under agenda discussions, the pre-qualification regulations for the Hartley Dodge Historic Preservation Projects, 2018 uh, Municipal Budget Schedule, the 2018 Capital Budget Overview, which will lead to introduction of ordinances tonight, and one item we've just added, and that is related to the tax deduction issues that you've probably been reading a whole lot about. Uh, the resolutions that you may comment on, Resolution uh, 33, which is uh, to enter into the uh, co-op uh, North Jersey wastewater co-op pricing, and this is one of many uh, co-ops that we use to get the best possible uh, deal prices for anything we purchase. The uh, 2017 tax appeal related to the Realogy property on um, Park Avenue a settlement is on that resolution. The uh, appointing of James Burke as a part-time electrician for the borough. Resolution setting salaries for full-time non-union and then also resolution for part-time non-union. Please keep in mind that union salaries are set through contracts and so these are trying to keep our high-performing um, non-union personnel up, up to pace with the others. Resolution for to approve and the renewal the application bowling alley license for NJ Entertainment which is strikes. Resolution for renewing the amusement device license for strikes also. Resolution for transfer of plenary retail distribution license of Silver Seas Enterprises to an Anad Divine Liquor. This is just a retail license, not a consumption license. Uh, resolution certifying the governing body compliance with the United States Equal Opportunity Commission's enforcement guide, guidance on the consideration of arrest and conviction records in employment decisions under Title VII, the Civil Rights Act of 1964. Resolution doing a non-disclosure agreement with Tangent Energy Solutions for electric generation project. This is uh, moving towards produce our own power in, within the town as uh, augment what we are purchasing. Resolution designating towing operators for 2018, 19, and 20. And this is done triennially. Uh, resolution for approving renewal of application for livery owner's uh, license for travels taxi. And also a uh, next resolution is driver's permit for travelers taxi and limousine. A resolution accepting justice assistance grant of the amount of $15,000 authorized an in-kind match of $35,000 for body-worn cameras and related equipment for the Madison police officers. And resolution for Madison uh, execution grant agreement with the County of Morris for community development block grant for improvements in the amount of $80,000, which is for Plain Street. So those are the resolutions that will be on the consent agenda, and you may comment on all those or any of those. Anyone wishing to comment on those, please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting. And we move on to uh, ordinances for hearing. And since this is the first official, I'm, I'm, I'm skipping a page, going really fast here. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Not trying to get to a football game. It'll be too late for me anyway. So <laughs> moving back, our first agenda discussion, pre-qualification regulations for the Hartley Dodge Historic Preservation Projects. I'll vote. I'll, okay. Good evening, everyone. Um, so over the holidays, I believe your packets included a 17-page pre-qualifications request. That is a pro forma that is given by the state DCA and uh, was edited by our design consultants, Clark Hayden Hintz, for the plaza restoration and um, requires a resolution of acknowledgement from the governing body as well as uh, a public hearing. So all those regulations, uh, uh, just one more thing to do, I suppose, as far as resolutions are concerned. But uh, if there are any questions about any, any of that packet, it's, it's fairly standard as far as the state goes. And uh, again, just requires the formality of a resolution uh, in order to accomplish. So if there's any questions, uh, please question. let me know. 
Uh, Bob, can you explain the purpose of why we're going through this process sure. in terms of the nature of the vendor that we want to do this work on a historic building? So normally the state uh, purchasing requirements and local public contracts law requires us to take the low bidder uh, uh, regardless uh, with very narrow uh, basis for rejection. So the prequalifications process allows us to uh, do something a little bit different, uh, but in compliance with local public contracts law, and that allows us to pre-qualify our contractors on a number of different topics. And those topics are listed in the 17-page document that you have. Uh, it's fairly extensive, and it is uh, designed and intended to give us the best uh, possible historic preservation-oriented contractor we can find when we bid the project. And this process is used for the renovation of this building um, several years ago Correct. and enabled otherwise that we could have had a contractor in here with no experience in working with historic buildings such as this and could have been quite a problem if they didn't have the proper experience. And, and isn't this the contractor that did the work here on Hartley Dodge? No. The contractor hasn't been selected yet. This is One a request for qualification. Right. Okay. It could very well be the same contractor, but the request for qualifications allows us to accept qualification statements from multiple contractors and then select. Okay. Okay? Any other questions? Okay. Thank you, Bob. Sure. 2018 budget schedule. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, in consultation with finance liaison, uh, Council Member Austri Bailey and Council Member Carmelo Vitali and Ray Cody, we've pulled together um, a uh, summary proposed budget schedule. Um, this is very similar to last year, slightly different in that we had a special meeting in February. This year we're asking for a special meeting in March on March 5th. Um, I'm going to change this to zoom it out a little bit. Um, uh, so uh, January 8th tonight, we're going to discuss the budget schedule, introduction of the 2018 road improvement ordinances, and talk just very briefly about the five-year capital plan. Um, on January 22nd, um, the schedule is to review the open space uh, trust fund performance for 2017, uh, funds coming in, funds going out, and a uh, brief discussion on what the open space trust fund may be looking to um, potentially encumber in 2018. Uh, February 12th will be the first um, discussion on the draft budget. That, that will be either then or before council will get their large black books along with uh, budget presentation. February 26th, department head hearings. March 5th will be a special meeting and that will be kind of dedicated to the budget. Um, and the hopeful goal is that we come out of that meeting with consensus for administration and finance to develop the final formal budget that would be introduced on March 26th. As uh, Councilwoman Bailey mentioned, we need to introduce the budget on March 26th to stay within <coughs> statutory guidelines. Um, if we fail to do that, um, it would be a negative um, point against us in the best practices checklist, which in turn could impact the state aid that we receive from the state of New Jersey. So that's an important um, threshold time. The reason we have a fair amount of time between March 5th and March 26th is the state has um, created a new process for the submission of the budget. It's an electronic submission system, and they're still in the midst of trying to make it work, so I want to make sure we have enough time to get the documentation uploaded properly. So um, with that, I'll answer any questions or any, any concerns with the March 5th date um, or any concerns with the schedule. Any questions on the schedule? Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. All right. With that, with that, there would be April 23rd would be the adoption date, 20, 28 days after, um, a minimum of 28 days after the introduction. Um, the budget's out there, available to see um, at the clerk's office and, and online, and then adoption would happen on April 23rd. 
That's it. Okay. We'll roll right into uh, capital budget overview. So, um, real briefly, the five year capital plan was distributed um, on December 8th. And this evening, we're going to introduce two ordinances and um, this five year capital plan summary, which is available online. Um, and I'll have copies here this evening um, for the attendees, uh, summarizes the various departments. And I just want to point out that um, this evening we are going to be introducing the $1.8 million for road reconstruction, the $705,000 for milling and overlay. We are anticipating a total of uh, about $4.4 million in capital projects. Um, in uh, the, from general capital, and then another 1.6 million um, in funds uh, in uh, capital ordinance funds needed for the utilities. Um, those will all be introduced later via ordinance. Um, the budget that we are drafting um, will uh, be able to substantiate these. Um, capital items. Um, we will have other times um, on February 12th to discuss um, in general capital. And then on February 26th, each department will come up and you'll have an opportunity to talk to Bob Vogel specifically <coughs> about other uh, capital items, stormwater, sanitary, sewer. Ken O'Brien, you can talk to him about building improvements in DPW. Um, you can talk to Darren, Dat Chief Dadgeson, about police and Lou about fire, et cetera. Are there any questions on that? And just a, a little follow through, I want to thank several of the people that are in the seats right now that were here for the 6 o'clock meeting, so you get bonuses for uh, mm -hmm. staying for the, uh, the actual introduction of the ordinances. Um, and some of us up front here have been here for a long time where we wouldn't even start the conversation about capital projects until January, February, and all of a sudden passing the ordinances and getting the bids out in um, late spring and uh, we're all of a sudden behind the eight ball and projects got pushed to the next year and we didn't always get the best possible pricing. So this, this process of doing the preliminary budget in the prior year and then coming right out as we're doing tonight to introduce the ordinances so we can get these uh, bid packages on the street so we can have our roads taken care of. So it really has worked very well. Any other comments or questions on that? Okay. All right. You want me to report on um, some of those numbers on the tax collection now, Mayor, or do you want me to hold off on that? Yeah, why, why don't you... Uh, since I'm up here. Yep, since you're there, put, put, uh, numbers, and now this will, we're going on to our next item, which is the uh, property tax exposure for um, and the effect on deductions. So Jim can report on the numbers. Uh, we've heard something from Austria already, but you can back it up with a little bit more, and we'll talk about what we will do as a borough. Just a little bit more in terms of details. As uh, Councilwoman Bailey reported, $8.5 million was collected in December. Of that, $8.1 million was collected in the last two weeks. And I, I cannot stress enough what a wonderful job Hattie and Chrissy did downstairs um, processing all those payments, um, dealing with all the customers, all the inquiries um, in an extremely professional and expedient manner. Um, I was just uh, very, very happy with um, how they were able to do that. Um, on a more detailed standpoint to report um, to the council and to the public, um, first quarter 2018, 847 property owners prepaid that quarter of their property tax. Um, of those, almost all of them, 650 of them, also prepaid uh, first and second quarter taxes. Um, of the 847, 205 of them actually paid also into the third and fourth quarter. So we had a significant number of people um, prepaying um, their taxes. Um, to give you an indication, um, I did a very quick analysis of the total number of residential units and um, it's about 4,000 units in the town, so you had almost 20, over 20% of the uh, um, residential residents um, and property owners, I should say, come in and prepay their taxes. Um, I also did a very quick back of the envelope analysis of um, properties that uh, pay over $20,000 in property taxes. There's about 390 residential properties that pay over $20,000 in property taxes. That um, doesn't sound like a whole lot when you think that there's 4,000 um, residential units in town. However, uh, keep in mind that those 390 pro so properties um, pay uh, close to uh, over 10 million of the 60, mil 60 plus million dollars in total tax levy. 
And that's important for everyone to know when, when you're paying your property taxes, you're prepaying everything. You're prepaying the Board of Ed, the county, and the municipal taxes. So with that, I'll take any questions or... And Oh, oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, yes, I think this is a great idea, um, Jim, that we need to have the administrators here research all the possibilities. I know they've been talking on the state level, some ideas to help us going into 2018. We need to help our residents. I don't know whether, you know, on the local level, level I know there are other towns talking about it. I, it, I would really appreciate it if the administrators would look to all possibilities to help our residents. I see. Yes, certainly what is very clear is what happened with the prepayment is a one-shot deal. That is, it helps, re, you know, third 2018, after 2018, we're going to see that go away. Um, and the more we can work with the state, our legislators, and working something and uh, see what the other towns are, are doing. Ben? Yeah, I, I just wanted to add to that, that I think it would, it would be prudent to not be among the very first towns to do this. There are already three announced. On the other hand, I think it would be irresponsible to be among the last. So I would hope that in the interim, we queue up a way in which we could participate. I understand there are a bunch of legal uh, issues that are open and accounting issues, but nevertheless, we know three municipalities are moving ahead. So we had to educate ourselves on what exactly they're setting up. And, uh, and subsequent municipalities as well. And then at the point at which it seems right, we, we'd be ready to go. I would hate for us to decide we're ready to go and then spend six months reviewing various ways of doing it. Right. Yep. Thank you. And worse, and the other flip side is to go too fast and then do something right. that in the end could hurt our residents. Yeah, like going to court. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, we, what we've seen come out and what is being referred to here is um, various towns that are setting up different strategies, whether it's a charity or some other structure that would allow the um, property taxes um, to remain fully deductible. And um, so on, at your direction, Ray and I will continue to research that. We'll work with our legal team to look at the various options and make sure that we're offering the residents uh, every possible option um, available um, that would work for both the municipality and, and help them with the new legislation. Maureen? Um, the IRS came out and said they would only accept first and second quarter for deductibles. So for those 237 um, people that prepaid third and fourth quarter, um, is there any recourse for them? So we're going to be... Um, we're going to see if anybody asks for a refund. We anticipate that will happen, and we'll be putting together later on this week a, um, a process on, on if, how, and when that can happen. And we anticipate some people doing it. Um, obviously, some people were prepaying while they were concurrently also having their taxes taken out by their, by their mortgage company right. in the bank. So it really uh, makes for a challenging situation. So we'll be looking into that. Any other questions or comments? Yeah, I'm looking at it. We got a. <laughs> All right, thank you. So um, we will uh, <laughs> obviously we'll be reading a lot about this, and uh, we'll be uh, reaching out to our uh, state legislative team to to make sure we're in communication with them, and they're keeping us up to date with what uh, Trenton is doing, and we will uh, keep the all our residents up to speed and make sure we can do the right thing. All right. Now, number 14, which is ordinances for hearing. And since, again, this is our first meeting of the year, there are no ordinances for hearing. And uh, we'll go on to our second invitation for discussion. This is may, when you may come up and comment on any topic. But again, the same rules apply as far as time. Please keep your comments to three minutes, but I will give you a grace period of one minute. Uh, if you have something to say, please step up to the lectern, state your name, your address, write the same on the clipboard. Anyone wishing to be heard, please step forward. Seeing none, I close this part of the meeting, and we move on to introduction of ordinances. Will the clerk please read the statement? 
ordinance is scheduled for first reading have a hearing date set for Monday, January the 22nd, 2018. All will be published in the Madison Eagle, posted on the bulletin board, and made available to members of the public requesting copies. I call up ordinances for first reading and ask the borough clerk to read said ordinances by title. Ordinance 1, 2018, Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $1,800,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the 2018 road reconstruction projects, related work, and miscellaneous projects. Mayor, I move Ordinance 1 2018. I second that motion. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ordinance 2 2018. <clears throat> Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $705,000 from the General Capital Improvement Fund for the 2018 milling and overlay projects. Mayor, I move Ordinance 2-2018. I second that motion. Any council discussion? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ordinance 3-2018. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $35,000 from the Electric Capital Improvement Fund for LED light fixtures. Mayor, I move Ordinance 3-2018. Second. Any council discussion? Um, I realize that we haven't done a cost-benefit analysis and it's not a great deal of money, uh, but I, but I uh, believe it, that we should report that at least anecdotally we anticipate the break even on this expenditure to come very quickly. Uh, these LED lights require less maintenance, they use less electricity, and I believe they're brighter. So there's no, for $35,000, we are spending money very well. Yep. Any other comments? Roll call vote. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Mr. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Ordinance 4-2018. Ordinance of the Borough of Madison appropriating $42,400 from the General Capital Improvement Fund and $10,600 from the Municipal Open Space Trust Fund for improvements to the Summer Hill Park Trail. Mayor, I move Ordinance 4-2018. A second. Any council discussion? I, I, I just want to make a comment. I, I want to say thank you to... Um, uh, to Austria and the administration for uh, th this this uh, improvements to Summerhill. I think it's going to be great because the friends of uh, Shade Tree have some great uh, excitement to tell people, like on January 22nd. So you guys did a good job. Thank you. And thank you, Mayor. Um, I would also like to report that um, what we're doing here is the the. Uh, municipality is advancing the money that we the, for the grant that we received from the county so we will be getting once we complete the project uh, we will be getting the forty two thousand four hundred dollars from the county um, and it'll go back into the general fund and meanwhile the ten thousand six hundred represents our match for the grant that came from open space Question and answer. Yeah, okay, excellent. And I just wanted to say thank you to ISJ. Um, this is the second time this grant application was made, um, and it um, they reviewed it. They made changes. It was accepted, and it's going to do wonders for a very underused piece of property right in the middle of one of our larger neighborhoods. So. I think it's I think it's really going to be a good thing. Thank you. Okay. Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Ms. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hoover? Yes. Good. Okay. Consent agenda resolutions. Will the clerk please read the statement? Consent agenda resolutions will be enacted with a single motion. Any resolution requiring expenditure supported by a certification of availability of funds. <coughs> resolution requiring discussion is removed from the consent agenda. All resolutions will be reflected in full in the minutes. Mr. Mayor, I move resolutions R33 through 47-2018. A second. Any council discussion or any that need to be pulled? Yeah, I need to recuse myself from R33 2018. Okay. 
Any others? And I, for the uh, public, again, I did outline each of those resolutions uh, earlier in the meeting. Okay, roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitale? Yes. Bailey? Yes to all. Mr. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Mr. Byrne? Yes to all, but R33, 2018. Abstain. Mr. Hoover? Yes. All right. There is no unfinished business. Approval of vouchers. For the current fund, $4,758,321.82. General capital fund, $47,610. The electric operating fund, $689,937.24. The electric capital fund, $21,052. Water operating fund thirty six thousand four hundred and fifteen dollars and ninety cents. The water capital fund sixteen thousand two hundred and seventy one dollars thirty four cents. The trust for five hundred and fifty dollars. Total is five million five hundred and seventy thousand one hundred and fifty eight dollars and thirty cents. Mr. Mayor, I move the bill list. <laughs> second. second. Any discussion? And it need to be pulled. Roll call vote, please. Mrs. Vitali? Yes. Ms. Bailey? Yes. Wolkowitz? Yes. Mr. Rowe? Yes. Mr. Byrne? Yes. Mr. Hooper? Yes. There is no new business. I move that we adjourn. I have a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well done, everyone. Out of the gate strong. Good streak. John. John. John still has his streak. And if you hustle, you can get most of the game. Yep. I was supposed to move the door, sir. Even if I tried to cut five minutes off the, uh, oh, no, um, ten minutes off the meeting. I, I, I think I got And, uh, no. Appreciate it. Did you move the bill voucher or did anybody just make it?